sick people, spiritually sick people, or mentally sick people meeting one another, you know, mentally sick people. This, this whole world is a big, gigantic mental hospital. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, those mental sim symptoms that I described to you, many of us still have them, right? Amen? But the thing is, only 10%, 10% of these people are in the hospital. Maybe less than 10%. Yeah, much less than 10%. Meaning, 90 or 95% of those mental patients just walking around, doing every single thing in their jobs and family and doing, you know, hey, to begin with, you know, those mental patients are in the church too. This church too, right? Yeah. yeah. So this, I mean, this is true. Spiritual hospital. That's why we are here. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. So we need help. Even though we are out of this, we still have isps, right? Yeah. Individual spiritual problems. Now, what else? Eternal suffering. If this fist is not resolved, then this suffering will continue on to the eternity. And that's called what? Hell. Hell. And then generational suffering. Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. Okay, uh, those things will go down to the next generation, fourth and fifth to the fifth generation. And then it will continue on and on and on. Okay? More and more and more. Okay? And that's why this thing, the spiritual problems must be stopped at your generation by the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Look at this. How can anybody, any human being, with good you know, works or good efforts solve this problem? Okay. So, while you are still separated from God because of the sin, under the control of Satan, oh, you do a lot of good works here. Those are the good works inside of the sin. Still separated from God. Still under the control of Satan. Okay? Yeah. Oh, you do a lot of bad works here. Same thing. Bad works, good works, are all dead works. Because you are dead. You are dead. Okay? And that's what this passage is all about. Ephesians chapter 2. We were dead in sins and you know, trespasses. <coughs> we couldn't do anything. What could we do to our death? Nothing. And that's why, look at this. We were dead. We could not revive ourselves. Huh? And then how much more can we solve these problems and go through these problems and meet God? No way. See, what's religion? Religion is people, dead people, okay, who are under the sin, separated from God, under the control of Satan, trying to solve these spiritual problems on their own dead efforts, Sinful efforts to meet the Holy God. How is it possible? How is it possible? Okay? See, all those religions out there, okay? Religions, I'm talking about general religions, okay? Buddhism, uh, Catholicism, uh, Hinduism, all this. One common characteristic. What is it? Good works. Good works, okay? What good is it? You do all those kind of good works while you're still in this condition. Nothing works. Nothing works. So look at this picture. 
Okay? So solve this method, mathematic problem. If you cannot go up, God has to come down to us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Yeah. See, God who came down to us is called the gospel. Yes. Okay? Yes. And that action of God coming to us is called grace. Yes. And the method of God coming to us okay, uh, is through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. That's the only way. That's the only way. That's why John chapter 4, 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the only way. I am the only truth. I am the only life. Okay? Why? Because you are dead. Every single person is dead. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. Every single is born into this condition, sin. And there is no... There, there is no Righteous person, not even one. Romans chapter 3 verse 10. Every single person is born into this condition. This condition of original sin. Okay? So, you know, the issue is not about, okay, so who is better? The issue is not about, oh, okay, uh, moral issues or ethical issues. The issue is not about, okay, so how many good works can I do to reach God? No! That's not the issue here, okay? The whole issue is who can solve the problem of the sin, separation from God, Satan's control, all these spiritual problems, curse, hell, okay? Who's going to solve that? Yeah. Only God, and that God who came to us is Jesus. And what He did is Christ. And that's why Jesus is Christ. Praise God. Okay? We call that good news, the gospel. Because we couldn't go to God, He came to us. That's why it's good news. Amen? We were hopeless and we were helpless. That's why God, by His grace, He had to come. Why? Because He loves us. Okay? This is not a story, people. This is not a theory, people. This is not a textbook teaching. Okay? And I, I told you, how are you going to solve that, that drug issue that's just, just running in your family? How are you going to solve the issue of the poverty running in your family? How are you going to solve the problem of all that wild living in your family? <coughs> it's a practical issue, people. Okay? It's not you know, a theoretical issue here. Realistic, practical issue. Because the real problem is the sin of saying no to God, disbelieving God. And because the real problem is a separation from God. And the real problem is a Satan's control. See, this is one problem. One problem. And God solved this problem by the cross of Jesus Christ. This is not so big. I wanted to draw red cross, but blue cross here. Really doesn't matter whether it's red or blue. Praise the Lord. Amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. What's the good news? Why is the gospel good news? See, Jesus became the Christ. Jesus is not the first name and Christ's last name. No. Jesus is the name of the person. And that name Jesus means what? Savior. How did He become our Savior? How did He become? How? Through Christ. Okay? Why? Because Christ is the title. Jesus is the name and Christ is the title. The title uh, shows the function. Okay? So, what did Jesus do? He, Jesus, the Savior, He saved us through the works of Christ. Amen? Amen? 
Yes, Jesus our Savior, He did the works of the Christ on the cross. On the cross. What does that mean? That He became the Christ. What does it mean that He, Jesus, is the Christ? Why is that important that Jesus is the Christ? First time I noticed, uh, you, you sign the you know, outside. I was you know, I was parking, and then I saw the sign "Faith, Hope, and Love Christian Community" underneath. There were two red words. Only Christ. When did you put it up? Put it up. A long time ago. What was it before then? Huh? Oh. So since the beginning of uh, you know this location, it was there only Christ. Yeah. I think it said to know God and make Him known, but we changed it to only. Christ. Oh, you see, He's honest. <laughs> but anyway, you know, just because you put only Christ doesn't mean that you know that's your conclusion where you enjoy Christ. But I know this church, that's your conclusion, and then you enjoy that conclusion more and more, continuously, gradually, every day. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Why only Christ? Why is Jesus the only Christ? There are many Jesuses. I know, many Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Joshua. You know? There's so many Jesus, especially, I am, you know, no bad things towards uh, our Mexican brothers, but then, you know, many Mexican brothers, their name is Jesus. Right? Just because their name is Jesus doesn't mean that he is the Christ. There is only one who is the Christ. Okay? Only one Christ. Okay? Although there are many Jesus. Of course, there are many Christs too, right? Christopher and you know, but then see only one Messiah. Same meaning, right? Same word. Christ in Greek, Messiah in Hebrew. What does that mean? Anointed one. Anointed. If you look at the Bible, especially the Old Testament, there were three offices that God had to anoint directly, personally. Who are those three? Priests. Priest and prophet and kings. Okay? But those human priests could not solve the problems of sins, even their sins, right? Even though they uh, were called by God to mediate the problems of the sins of the people to God by sacrificing animals, right? Priests. You know, that was the main uh, duty. But those human priests were pointing at the real priests. Okay? They were the representatives. They were the representation of the real high priest, the priest of priests. Okay? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26. Jesus is the true priest. Praise God. He became the sacrifice once and for all. Because of his death on the cross and living again, he solved the problem for us. Okay? He became the solution for us. Now, prophet Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Okay? Jesus is the true prophet. Why? Because those prophets <clears throat> proclaim the messages of the word to the people, saying, Hey, you left God, you are separated from God, so come back to God, but you cannot come back to God unless, you know, true prophet becomes the bridge, the way. And who is the true prophet, true bridge, true way? Jesus. He became the true prophet. Amen? And what about kings? Kings, okay, they had to protect the people to uh, you know to fight the enemy, but who is the real enemy here? Satan. Okay, human kings cannot you know fight 
Satan and win over Satan. That's why they were just representation of the real king, king of kings. Who is the king of kings? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Who is the real king of kings? Oh, Matthew chapter 2 verse 2. Many more message, uh, passages. King of kings. And you put these three offices together and one word. Christ. Okay? He is the real priest who solves the problem of sin. He is the real prophet who solves the problems of the separation from God. He is the real king of kings who solves the problem of Satan's control. Okay? And he did that on the cross. Dying for our sins. And he fulfilled this promise by resurrecting in three days. Praise the Lord. Yes. That's why Jesus became Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Matthew 16, 16. And that's why when people, when Jesus asked disciples, who do people say I am? And people, so they were just disciples, they were just, you know, telling Jesus what people say about Jesus. Yeah, people say that you are Elijah. Yeah? You are Jeremiah. You are uh, the John the Baptist or those uh, prophets. Okay? Jeremiah, okay, we be prophet. Oh, see, Jesus didn't come just for you know good works or compassion or charity works or alms giving. No, people. <clears throat> what about Elijah? Elijah, he you know, he is the representation of miracle power, all that. Jesus did not come just to heal our sicknesses, but he came to seal the real sickness. He came to heal the real spiritual sickness. This is the spiritual sickness. These are the spiritual sicknesses. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Okay? And some say, oh, John the Baptist. Oh, yeah. I mean, so he's just, he's righteous. He's holy. Okay? But then, see, Jesus did not come to teach us to become just morally upright. No. This issue is not just moral failure, ethical failure, but then this whole sin is the real problem. Okay? That's why when Jesus knew those wrong answers, that's why he asked those disciples, Who do you say I am? And Peter answered, What did he say? And he was, you know, he's not in his mind, I mean, right mind, but then, you know. Because of God's grace, he answered, Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when he answered the correct answer, Jesus was so happy. Peter, son of Jonah, you are so blessed. Why? Because, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. But, okay, this is not revealed by your flesh but by the grace of God in heaven. How can we understand this without God's grace? How can we come out of this without God's grace? How can we believe this without God's grace? Okay? And that's why everything is God and His grace. That's what Jesus meant when He said, Peter, son of Jonah, you are blessed. See, I will build my church upon this rock, this foundation, this confession, and this truth, this gospel, Christ. Okay? I will do all my works and I will fulfill all the plans of God the Father upon this rock, the gospel. Amen? Amen. So you want to be used by God? And you want your life to be included in God's plan? Hey, this is the answer. This is the answer, right? And you do all those things in your plan, and then you plan beautiful plans, and then you want to help people, and then uh, you want to uh, help your children, and then you want to be a you know, renowned person, and then you want to do good works. Without this, it's missing the mark. What is it? Missing the mark? 
Hamartia, sin. Okay? Yeah. And then Jesus says, yeah. No gates of Hades will overcome you. Satan cannot overcome this gospel, this answer, this faith, and you that you who have this, this faith by God's grace, Satan cannot overcome you. What about drug problem? What about poverty? What about suicides running in your family? Okay? Satan behind that, this is the answer. This is the answer. You who have this answer, you who have this gospel, continuously go into this answer. Okay? That's the answer to stop the curse in your family line. Amen? Yeah. And, and Jesus continues on. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. This key, with this key, okay, you open on earth and then, yeah, it will be open in heaven. And whatever you buy on earth with this key, yeah, it will be bound in heaven, okay? See, this key, this gospel, this confession, this answer, this conclusion, this grace is everything of everything. And especially those forces of darkness, okay, that binds things in your family lives, that's, you see, with this key, you open, with this key, you bind the darkness. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. By God's grace, you hear this message, and you understand this, and you believe faith, we read that passage, Ephesians chapter 2, right? And then, by His grace, you accept slash invite Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, then you become what? God's child. Okay? You become God's child. C-O-G, that John chapter 1 verse 12, you believe and accept, you become His child. Amen? Then what happens? You go back to the original condition. You go back to the original condition. Original condition is restored. But more than that, more than that, in the Garden of Eden, Adam was never called child of God, but you become God's child, and the Holy Spirit indwells in you. Amen. So you get to enjoy all these blessings, okay? Number one, yeah, child of God. Number two, the Holy Spirit indwells with you. And then, now, see, you get to pray to God and God the Father accepts your prayer according to His will and His time schedule, okay? Meaning, there is a relationship established, okay? So many people just pray. Then there is no relationship. God is not their Father. Therefore, God cannot receive that prayer. But then, at least we have that qualification to pray to God and receive answers to our prayers. Amen? Yeah. And then, number four, what is it? Now, Satan becomes our enemy. We used to be COD, not, okay, not anymore COD, now it's like COG, right? So, now we can fight the devil, because the devil is our enemy. We used to be his slaves, his children, not anymore, okay? 
now we became his enemies. So we have the power to bind Satan. And Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, angels serve us. Angels serve us. And one more. See, now we have this wonderful blessing to now go back to this original condition of dominating, ruling over the world by preaching the gospel of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? Conquering the world, making disciples of all nations. Okay? And we have this background, citizenship of heaven. How many of you are enjoying these blessings abundantly, 24-7, continuously? Raise your hand. Wow. I don't enjoy those blessings much. What's going on here? You come up here and you preach. Honestly, I don't get to enjoy these blessings 24-7 abundantly like you do. So, one more time. Let me ask you. How many of you enjoy these blessings 24-7 continuously even without any break and even without any you know, swaying or without, you know, 24-7? Raise your hand. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Nobody. Okay? What's the problem here? We still have, I told you, damages. Damages in our mind. We still have mental problems. We still have spiritual issues. We still have emotional scars. We still have relationship conflicts. Right? We don't go to hell anymore, but we still worry about the future, right? Those damages, even though Christ is in us, we, even though we have these perfect blessings in the salvation that we have received by God's grace, the reason we are not enjoying these blessings abundantly is because we still have this flesh sinfulness. Now, here comes another big issue. God knowing this problem for Christians, okay? Christian walk. Did God say, okay, with your own efforts, with your own endeavors, through hard workings, get rid of all these flesh. Is that what God said? No. Then it becomes again that works. Right? I'm not going to go into details, but I'm going to share with you Biblical answer. God's answer. God said, Hey, you are in Christ. Enjoy the grace in Christ. What does that mean? Instead of focusing on those issues, right? Turn your eyes upon whom? Jesus. He didn't say, turn your eyes upon problems. No, no, no. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Okay. When you focus on Jesus, continuously listen to his messages and continuously enjoy these messages, in other words, this way, Not the other way, right? 
as you focus on Jesus, continuously uh, grow in the knowledge of only Christ, okay? what's going to happen? The joy of the Lord is my strength. You see? The joy of the Lord, the joy of Christ is, is, is my strength. As we continuously focus on Christ, as we continuously enjoy Christ, that enjoyment becomes true power. And as I enjoy Christ, that naturally will melt down these problems like this, like this, like this, right? If those problems are melted down, what happens? Boom! You see, connected to these real blessings. Even though you do have these blessings, we were not enjoying these blessings actually, fully, but then, now, as we focus on Christ continuously, that enjoyment becomes the power to melt down those isips, worries, angers, and all those different issues that we still have in our uh, flesh system will be melted away. And that's how we get to enjoy God and His blessings. His presence, His blessings, His power, His authority, His hope, everything as ours more and more. Amen? Amen. That's the biblical way. That's the gospel way. And that's the Christ's way. And that's the Holy Spirit way. Okay? That's the way God taught us to enjoy God and His blessings. And that's what this Christian life, Christian walk is all about. Apostle Paul call, uh, calls, calls this following the Spirit. Walking in the Spirit. Not walking following our flesh. Not trying to keep the law okay, of you know, putting our efforts and endeavors to Stop all these things on my own efforts. You try that. You try that. Most likely, either you become so prideful that you will be uh, so judgmental to other people, okay? Or, you know, you're going to fall into so much despair. Oh, I tried. It's not working. Obviously, it shouldn't work. It doesn't work that way. I mean, it shouldn't work because that's not the way God promised. Amen? Yeah. So, look at this whole spiritual reality. Spiritual, uh, present problems are spiritual problems. Therefore, the only answer is what? Christ. That's why only Christ. And that sign out there Good sign. Okay? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your, your knowledge, your truth, your wisdom, your inspiration, your revelation, your love, your grace. And Lord, because of your grace, because of your love, and because of your truth, yes, we have hope. Even though we are so sinful and we always fail and fall and make mistakes, but because of you, we have so much hope. We thank you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Sean. Hallelujah. Man was originally created to enjoy fellowship with God. He was to enjoy His love and He was to worship Him. But man got deceived. He said no to God. He fell into disbelief. Then 
he was separated from God. And Satan took control. Man became a child of the devil, the father of lies. But God in all his grace and mercy had a solution. He sent his son, the true priest, prophet, and king. The priest who washed away our sins, our prophet who pointed us back to God, and our king who gives us dominion over the devil. No longer does he have power over us. Hallelujah. And not only when we accept Jesus did we become a child of God, he gave us all these benefits. But yet, our flesh gets weakened and we stumble and we fall. But God's grace covers and says, forgiven. He says, just focus upon me, not upon your problems, and I will dissolve them all away. What a God, what a Christ. It is through his grace that we are able to live this Christian life by not leaning on our own self-efforts, but leaning on Christ himself. That he frees us from tiredness, from being heavy laden, and he sets us free because he will always do the work as long as we keep listening to the messages of Christ. His grace will see us all the way through. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to be the Christ, the problem solver, our everything of everything. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that only you could have thought of such a perfect plan. And as we keep our focus upon Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, everything works out according to your plans. We just thank you this night. We thank you for Pastor Sean, who has been with us this past weeks. We thank you for his wife Miriam and his church for releasing him. And Father, we just ask a special grace to be upon them, Lord, as they travel back tomorrow to L.A. We just thank you, Lord, for the teaching that you have given through Pastor Sean. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that this has been preached to this congregation through also our Pastor Lloyd, who has gone on to be with you, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that we will carry the baton on into the future. We just thank you now, Christ, that you will just do the work through us. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone said a grace. Amen. Now we can turn to one another and greet each other in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.